1967 was the year Daniel Arap Moy became Kenya's third vice president. On January 3rd, President Jomo Kenyatta appointed him to succeed Joseph Murumbi, who had previously given notice of his intention to resign from the vice presidency for what he called personal reasons back in September of 1966. So, Kenyatta had had more than three months to make up his mind about a successor to Murumbi. The previous year, with the help of Moy and Tom Boyer, Secretary General of the ruling Kenya African National Union, KANU, Kenyatta had succeeded in containing the political challenge of his left leaning first vice president, Oginga Odinga, by forcing him out of KANU and the vice presidency. Odinga would later take over the leadership of an opposition party, the Kenya People's Union, KPU, which ended up having only eight members in parliament. With Odinga safely out of the way, a new rift had developed within Kanu. By mid-1967, there had emerged what came to be known as a Kanu A and a Kanu B. Leading Kanu A was Kenyatta's powerful inner circle of Minister of State in the Office of the President, Biukoi Nange, Defence Minister, Joroge Mungai, and Attorney General, Charles Njonjo. They also worked with Moy, and when the need moved them, with others such as Charles Rubia, the first mayor of Nairobi, who was building up quite a following amongst the Kikuyu of Nairobi, especially small-scale traders from his home district, Muranga. Kanu B was the group of leaders allied to Mboya. They included Ronald Ngala from the coast, Samuel Ayodo Aluo, Lawrence Sagini Akisi, Joseph Otiende, a Luya, Jeremiah Nyaga, an Embu, and Elliot Ngalamwendwa, a Kamba. They were a multi-tribal lot, but unlike Kanu A, which was dominated by and seemed to serve at the behest of one tribe, the Kikuyu, Kanu B had no strong single tribe to identify its interests with. And in Parliament, by the end of 1967, Kanu B was clearly a minority. By then, too, it was clear that a battle of great proportions was looming between the two wings of Kanu. Part of the battle had to do with ethnic considerations. Kenyatta's inner circle were determined to ensure that the presidency and its now enormous powers did not slip from the grasp of the Kikuyu and, most certainly, not into Mboya's hands. The first inkling that Mboya was the next target after Odinga came when in July 1967, a motion was introduced in Parliament by Oduya Oprong, the KPU MP for Busia North, calling upon the President to sack Mboya for his alleged close links with the American Central Intelligence Agency. The motion came only a month after the Chinese resident envoy in Nairobi had charged Mboya of being a CIA agent. An embarrassed Daniel Arab Moy had come to Mboya's defense. He declared the Chinese envoy persona non grata for his utterances. But even as he did so, Kenyatta himself was warning that there were people within Kanu who were trying to manipulate Kanu for their own personal political ambitions. Since Odinga was no longer in Kanu, the presumed subject of Kenyatta's warning was Mboya. 1967 was also the year veteran Kajiado politician John Keane, one of Kenya's representatives in the East African Legislative Assembly in Arusha, Tanzania, became the first Kenyan legislator to be detained without trial. In a speech in the legislature in May, Keane had criticized the three East African presidents, Kenyatta of Kenya, Julius Nyerere of Tanzania, and Milton Obote of Uganda, of being the main stumbling blocks in the quest for an East African federation. Kenyatta was offended by Keane's remarks. He had Keane put in detention at Kamiti Maximum Prison and released him two months later, only after intercession on Keane's behalf by Kenyan fellow legislators at the East African Legislature, 
and Maasai elders. In 1967, Kenya had a new chief secretary and head of the public service, Geoffrey Karethi, whom Kenyatta appointed to take over from Duncan Degwa, who had moved to the central bank as its first Kenyan governor. Kenyatta would also appoint the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Peter Gashadi, to head the newly formed Kenya Film Corporation, which became the sole importer and distributor of cinema films in the country.